thing is here that the universe can be any other way and it's composed of pieces. So it's not independent or necessary. So what we see is if it is dependent, would you say the universe is dependent or independent? Uh, I, I would say it's, uh, I, I'm a determinist. So How determinist? I, I wouldn't say that, that, that um, everything being determined and everything being a necessary way. So it requires a determiner? No, no. Why? Because no, if you because, believe... because, so the idea of infinite regress seems paradoxical, and I understand it yes. seems counterintuitive. Yes. Um, but but the thing is, we're using our intuition, which is limited not only to within our universe, but within our planet, really, okay. our intuition, yeah. and, and our daily lives. Yes. And and it may be the, the case that our intuition, based with, with the laws of the universe, it may not be the case. But, but ultimately, when I have these discussions, the burden of proof isn't on me. Because again, I'm, I'm not saying yeah. I'm not saying a god doesn't exist. I'm not making a claim. Yeah, yeah you're saying I don't know. Yeah, exactly. But I'm, I'm trying to make a claim that he does. So that's why, do you say the universe is dependent or independent? Um, I'd say independent. Okay, so now what you've done is then you've accepted that we require something independent, but you've ascribed it to the universe. So now what I want to do is then take, show proof to you why the universe is not independent, and if it is not independent, then it requires something independent, because you've accepted that it's yeah. independent, you've ascribed it to the universe. Yeah. Now what did we say? The universe, if it's composed of pieces, if it can be any other way, then it is dependent. Yeah, but I don't think it can be any other way, right? Okay, stuff. okay, okay. But what I'm saying is this, that it can, for example, if we had five billion extra uh, less galaxies, yeah. is that the same universe? No. Okay, so it can be any other way. No, because I don't think that could be the case. What do you mean by that? So I'm, right. I'm saying we can create hypotheticals and like, oh, if the universe said, I mean, this, uh, for example, this specific Quran wasn't mm -hmm. here or that camera wasn't here, then the universe would be different. Can that be the case? It, it, it plays within our intuition that, yeah, it may be the case, right? It may be the case that that camera could be here. We could see with the universe, but I don't think that could be the case. You know okay, I mean? no, no problem. But even, but even if we go for determinism, that the fact that it is composed of part pieces yeah. shows that it is dependent. Because the fact that it is made out of pieces, Yes? No, I think so. Why not? No, but, no, that's, no, but that's my definition. My definition of something that is dependent yeah. is it can be any other way, but you said, okay, you believe it's not, it could be yeah. one way, yeah. and that is composed of pieces, energy. Yeah, but, yes. but it has to mean both of those things. So if it doesn't mean one of them, yes. which it doesn't for me as well. Yes, yeah, that's fine, but, the, uh, but also it has to not be the other one. Do you accept that it is composed of energy, for example? Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Second law of yeah. thermodynamics, energy yeah. cannot be created or destroyed, yeah. yeah? So, does energy have a will? No. Does it have consciousness? No. Okay, then how does it give rise to beings like us? If yeah. it is, so, for example, so, therefore what we say is that it is dependent because, number one, even if we don't say it could be any other way and we go with what you're saying, it's like that, the fact that it's composed of pieces shows that it is dependent. Now, if it is dependent, what does it depend on? Well, I still, I still don't agree that it that it is dependent. Oh, that's but, a, but, I mean, but, but, but we could even... Do you, accept, do you accept that it's composed by, pe in pe yeah, by pieces? Yeah, but I don't think that makes it be dependent. But how not? Well, because you said that dependency requires it's required it's made of pieces and those pieces yes. um, are, are yes. can, can have the potential like, to be like, 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 like energy like for example energy cannot be created or destroyed yeah. that doesn't mean it is independent it means it no, is yeah. we say it is infinitely dependent on the independent being so just because you get what I'm trying to say yeah, just yeah, because yeah. energy cannot be created or destroyed yeah. it doesn't make it infinite yeah. all it means is it's post eternal but it's post eternally relying on a dependent independent being but that begs the question doesn't it really so, so you're saying that this is what we say energy is what it depends on yes energy depends on an independent being therefore energy is dependent yes therefore it needs a dependent like it begs the, it begs the question no, no, but, but it has to because energy there's a set amount of energy within our universe yeah the question is if there is a set amount of energy within our universe who has limited it to that amount yeah. and if it is limited that amount it shows that it's dependent and if it is dependent it requires something that's independent well, I, 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 don't, I don't think it would, because I think Why not? If, if universe could exist forever, I, I don't know. No, 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 forever, okay. Yeah. I can say to you, I accept it. Universe exists post-eternally, forever. Yeah. That's fine. But the point is this, the fact that it has a set amount of energy within itself yeah, yeah. that cannot be created or destroyed, no yeah. problem, yeah. it is still dependent. Why? Because why is there a set amount? Who set that amount? Why not one more or one less? Yep. But, okay, but, good. But, but, but I, I'm not to answer that question, right? No, no, but it shows its dependency. I don't think it does because if there were a specific, wow. if there were a specific amount forever, theor theoretically, yes. if got if if, if uh, the universe did exist forever, yeah. and there was a specific amount that which there is, yeah, then that would still I don't that wouldn't that wouldn't necessitate a necessary being. It does. <laughs> I've got my good friend here who's saying uh, I don't know if you've seen him as well. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, uh, so 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 maybe you can add on to this. I think it'll be interesting. Just add on. So basically, the argument that I was saying is that. 
even though, even though, even even though we have, for example, we discussed this uh, energy that cannot be created or destroyed. But the point I'm saying is the fact that it's limited to a number, yeah. it's still even if we agree that it's eternal. Yeah, just uh, basically a uh, conjugate argument. Oh. Uh, but he's a hard determinist, so he believes the universe cannot be any other way. Oh. But I still said that the fact that there's energy within our universe and there is a set amount, even if it's eternal, it post eternally relies on the independent being. Right? So correct me if I'm making any mistakes here. So what I was saying is because energy cannot be created or destroyed because of the second law of thermodynamics, but the fact that there is a set amount shows this limitation, and if it's limited, limited, it's independent, uh, dependent. If it's dependent, it requires an independent being to make sense. Yeah. The, way, the way I would put it is, is as follows, is that if, if we're saying that the universe is determined, yeah. or, and everything within it is it, because, so because, <laughs> no, 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 because there's, a, you know, there's an uninterrupted causal chain yeah. of antecedent events. Yeah. Okay? Stand in the middle, so the mic so, if, if, Because this is the determinist argument, you can tell me if there's anything yeah. wrong with it. Yeah. So there is a, a, there is an uninterrupted causal chain of antecedent events, which means that everything, the universe and everything within it is determined, okay? Uh, and so therefore, notions of free will within the universe is uh, absurd or wrong yeah, or yeah. whatever. Uh, so, okay, fine. So what I would say to that is as follows, is that we agree that the universe is determined yeah. from one perspective. Yeah, but you, you disagree on like how, right? Yeah, so uh, what I would say is that, so we believe in the difference between, say, me and you, okay, or let's say an atheist or an agnostic, I don't know what your position is, but- Agnostic. Agnostic, and, and say, for example, someone who believes in the necessary existence, mm. is that we're in which we, wherein we believe, for example, a necessary existence, which, which um, eliminates all notions of an infinite regress of causes, yeah. uh, therein you will believe something like the antecedent causal chain of uninterrupted uh, events, which are, it's an infinite regress of some, yeah. some sort, yeah. okay? Yeah. So that's ma the major difference. You believe in infinite regress, you believe in one independent thing, which is not, Regressive, but then the question is this: Is that okay? The universe is it contingent or is it necessary? Our answer is as follows: The universe is contingent in abstraction. So, with re in relation to itself, it's contingent. But in relation to whether you believe in an uninterrupted causal chain of causal events, which we would say is absurd, or a necessary entity, then it becomes necessary only because of another. So, so in other words, the universe is necessary, not due to itself, but it's necessary as a, as a, as a result of its connection with a necessary existence. Yeah. But I, in abstraction, it's contingent. So I, I would ask, so why can the universe not exist reliant on itself, but uh, uh, God can? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so... Because God is immaterial. So why is the universe independent, but God, God is not... Uh, no, well, yeah, so, so like, if, if the idea that... So presumably, if you if you agree in a, an instigator of all change, like, yeah. like a necessary being, then that being must be like eternal, like it's outside of time, must be going back forever, or not not going back forever, but like Always everywhere, there. right, all at once. No. Okay. Um, so like outside of time. Okay. But why can I also don't know the time is wrong. But we're not going to get into that method of discussion. <laughs> um, so why can something like a god exist forever and rely on itself, but the universe can't? Well, the thing is about the universe is that you can conceive of it in two different ways. Either you can think of it as like a multiverse of, and if, because there's, see, let's, let's think of, let's exhaust the options. You've got, you can have a multiverse which is limited. You can have a multiverse which is unlimited. Yeah. So an infinite multiverse. Or you can have a universe which is not, is not unlimited, okay, but which, uh, once again, you can claim is a necessary being in and of itself. We would say, the question is, if you believe the universe exists, is it dependent or in the, is the universe dependent or independent? He said independent. He said independent. Okay. If you say it's independent, so the first thing I'll bring to your attention is that you believe in the existence of an independent thing. So uh, this is this is actually this this is uh, this is actually I would say a movement away from atheism completely. Yeah, because, well, I'm not, I'm not an atheist. So. No, I understand. So I'm just outlining that point. Yeah, yeah. Because at what point do we say that atheism is eliminated? Yeah. We say, okay, well, now if you believe in the existence of an independent entity, yeah. and this uh, is self-sufficient, it doesn't require anything outside of itself to yeah. subsist, then in this case, now you've moved away to, you're moving towards either deism or classical theism. Yeah, yeah. So, so okay. the, the way I describe it just briefly is that um, I, I, I kind of give, same thing with my approach to conspiracy theories, like even if conspiracies make sense, if there is, and I'm not, I'm not saying you're religious. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Like, um, is, is there, no, otherwise it'll be trouble. <laughs> <laughs> um, if there were another possible explanation, yeah. I would suspend belief. 
So um, I, I, I think it'd be like idiotic to say that mm. a god doesn't exist because I don't know the whole universe, right? And I think it may make sense um, within its own sphere and, and logic that if you went with a necessary being, like all, all these things would like add up, right? Um, and so he, he, that, that is one possible explanation. And equally, to me, there's another possible explanation that the universe, I mean, there, there are a few, but like, I, I, so like the universe could, could have gone back forever and, and infinitely regress or rely on itself. So because I think these are two, at the very least two, maybe more, possible explanations, it's up to like, it's the burn of people's on other people to like... Okay, so, so, so now I'll make the argument, right? I'll start by saying that the first principle that I think ought to be uh, considered is that something bereft of a quality for the most part, I'll give you the except there are exceptions to this rule, like any rule. But something bereft of a quality cannot produce it. So I'm, I'm accepting that there is there are instances where that's not the case. Something bereft of a quality cannot produce it. Okay, so nothingness cannot produce something. Because nothingness is defined as the absence yeah, yeah, of something. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I, so, I agree with that, I so, so for the most part, so in that case, we'll say, look, if that's the case, that something which is bereft of a quality cannot produce it, for the most part, yeah. and that's the general principle, then we will say, look at the universe itself. Or well, let's look at a, pot a pen potential multiverse, whether it's limited or unlimited. If we look at uh, all three of those things, either a universe or an unlimited universe or a limited universe, you'll find that in all three cases, that is composed of things which are co contingent. There's no doubt about that. This, this is where we disagreed, because if I'm a determinist, I yeah. think that things are contingent. No, in abstraction, because there's no way to disagree with this in abstraction. In other words, I'm saying that the, reason, the only reason as a determinist which you would say that these things are, 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 are necessary is in relation to the uninterrupted causal chain. Yeah. I'm saying, fine, have that belief. That's not a problem. Yeah. Yeah. I'm saying, in abstraction, this bottle is contingent. Yeah. I, I like the, the only reason why you can say, as a determinist, that this yeah. bottle is necessary yeah. is in connection with the uninterrupted causal chain. I'm saying that we're not considering that connection at the moment. And we're saying everything within the universe, in abstraction, cannot be claimed to be, if, if you, because then the burden of proof will be on you to prove how this bottle, which had an inception, is made up of limited variables, is in some way necessary and self-subsistent. Which we can, I mean, anything that is susceptible to destructibility or gener uh, generatability is in essence contingent. And if I can uh, uh, destroy this, or if there's a time in which this doesn't exist, then that kind of breaks that uh, idea. So in abstraction, the things in the universe don't actually exist. Uh, uh, are contingent basically. Okay. So uh, if that's if we agree on that, so we're saying that the principle at play is that, and there are exceptions to the principle. Uh, I know the exceptions where compositional fallacy will happen. Yeah, yeah. We'll yeah. About that. yeah. But the, the general principle is that something bereft of a quality cannot produce it. Yeah. So if we are if we have a universe that is composed of things which are contingent. In, in much the same way as that if you add nothingness to nothingness, you will not get something from it. If you add contingency to contingency, you cannot get necessity because yeah. something bereft of a quality yeah. cannot produce it. So no matter how much you bring contingent things with contingent things, you cannot, at some point, critical mass have a necessary thing. To put this in analogous format, I'll say this. This is a phone. As you know, this is a big case, as you can see. Yeah. Yeah. Now, actually, you might ask the question, why is this man have a case like this. Today my phone fell from a high distance and nothing happened to it. Did what, it fall so, it or did it fall? No, it fell. Okay. Well, I looked down, nothing happened. Yes. But despite this fact, it's contingent, I can assure yes. you. Yes. Now, this phone which is contingent, let's use the analogy of a charge. It's right now, I, I don't know, 50% charge. Yeah, that's not bad. Okay, no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Because I put, you know, the charge before I go to sleep and it's yeah, kind of, yeah, yeah, yeah. otherwise there's problems happening. Yeah. All right, so this phone is dependent on charge in order to operate. Okay, no problem. If I have two phones, they will depend on more charge. Yeah. If I have three phones, they will depend on even more charge. If I have four phones, they'll depend on it. I'm saying that, I'm saying there is no point at which, or there is no evidence that there is any point which I'll bring X amount of phones and that it will not be dependent on charge in order to operate. Yeah. And if there was such a thing, the power companies would be having a field day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the uh, EDF energy and uh, British gas or whatever. They'll say, you know what, just, just keep putting things out and maybe at one point we don't even need to source yeah. the material. Yeah, yeah. What I'm saying is that when you put dependent things with dependent things together, there is no evidence 
to suggest that at one point it becomes necessary. And if there is evidence, I would like to see it. Yeah, but, but, but yeah, so I still don't agree with the idea that these things are dependent, obviously. And that, yeah. that's where, I guess, the... No, but, no, but no, what I'm saying, we, we, you did agree that it's contingent and abstraction. Yes. Well, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm entirely... Can, or, what do you mean by contingent and abstraction? Meaning without, without reference to the uninterrupted causal chain. Yeah, but, but you, like, if you're looking at contingency and necessity, you have to reference what came before it. No, I understand, but then you, you, you'll be falling into a circular argument. In order for us to start from the beginning and, not, and avoid the circularity, we must argue from bottom up. We're saying that the constituent parts of this universe that we can examine empirically and put under a microscope and deal with, those parts, there is no evidence that there is any quality of necessity uh, exist within them in such a way that would make them self-sufficient uh, yeah. or self, uh, subsist within themselves. Yeah, they, 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 but they can't subsist within themselves, but they can subsist on the, the previous state. And, and that is a but possible... That, but that can't go into the regress then. Exactly. The things but, but, so, which so, we're seeing. But, but this is the thing that, like, I'm not necessarily arguing for, but I'm saying because I, I, I'm almost equally convinced by this idea that infinite regress could exist. I mean, the idea really? that something could come from nothing, thing? I, I think it's... No, but the, the issue is, uh, if we say that, uh, look, uh, when we talk about an infinite regress of anything, we have to fill in the blanks here. An infinite regress of what? If you say infinity can exist in the real world, that's one postulation. If you say that an infinite regress of causes can exist, yeah. that's another postulation. If we say an infinite regress of dependent things can exist, that's a third postulation. And they're not all the three, they're not all the same. Oh, yeah, yeah. So what I'm saying is, if the claim is, what is the claim? Is, it, is the claim that there can be an infinite regress of dependent things or causes or? Uh, yeah, so an, an infinite um, regress of, uh, of cause and effect claims. Yeah. And then well, uh, because they go back infinitely, yeah. Yeah. There is no first one necessarily, but it, it, it makes sense that if all of the things are set out in the same way and will all produce the, produce the same thing, they are necessitating everything else. And do these things have the quality of dependence as well? No. So for example, we said that this abstraction is dependent, it's contingent. So you're saying that, okay, someone caused this, so it has both the quality of dependence and cause. It's, it's, it's been preponderated, so it has... A, a, a cause is in the dictionary something which brings rise to phenomena, right? Yeah. All right, so this has been yeah. brought rise to, so it's been caused from yeah, that angle, yeah. right? But also a dependent thing in the dictionary is something which relies on something else. Yeah. So I'm, it's, it's just to be clear, is your claim that, 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 that this is both has the quality of dependence and cause, and that there can be an infinite regress of either or, or one of them only? So I guess it's, it's dependent on, on, on the previous previous action, the previous cause, right. right? Okay. Let, let's say that the, the bottle machine. Yeah. You know? Um, it's dependent on that thing and it, and it working. Um, and I think that that thing's existence, again, the bottle machine, was caused by someone who wants to make a bottle machine and then, and then it goes back, right? So, Eternally. yeah, so these things are cause and effect and that, that, that is dependent on the previous thing. Okay, good. But like, as, as, so uh, both. as, as, as um, Alex O'Connor, as I'm sure you know, yeah. so about the P and Pi's Q. Who's Alex P is, O'Connor? If P is necessary. Yeah, yeah Cosmic. But the boy. <laughs> if, <laughs> the boy. Yeah, P and Pi's Q and, and P is necessary, Q is necessary. Okay. Right, so in, in which case, if, I, if I'm saying that all the causes before, this thing that, that is an effect and has been caused and is dependent on these causes, as long as those things that it's dependent on are necessary, I think that the entire yeah, chain and, is. And if that's, look, if it depends on what we're saying, why P, uh, P and tells Q and Q is, Q is necessary, therefore Q is necessary. Yeah. Which is like one on one of uh, propositional logic, yeah? yeah. Yeah. Uh, modus ponens. But well, what I'm saying is that if we're, we've already conceded to the fact, if you're if you're saying that God is necessary, therefore what comes from God is also necessary. Yeah. We accept that as a case yeah. from one perspective. If we're, what I was objecting to, by the way, in that thing was that I was saying that if you're saying P entails Q and Q is a necessary existence because P is a necessary existence, there's a problem here. This is what this what this was where the uh, t we were talking cross purposes. But going back to the point, now if you say this has both the quality of cause causation and dependency, then, and then you can have an infinite root, sorry, uh, no, no, leave it, leave it, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's, it's, it's okay. Yeah, and so it can have, it's, it can have the quality of dependency. Yeah. What we're saying is, my argument in counter to you will be that to argue ad absurdum, okay? I would say if you have an infinite regress of dependent things, then you would have to concede that that infinite regress of dependent things is independent. So the set of all dependent things is dependent, whether it's infinite wait, or finite. Wait, dependent or independent? So, that, so, the, so the infinite regress. So, so the infinite regress that you, yeah. you're speaking about, fine, no problem. Let's accept that it, it can happen. Okay. So we're saying let's accept that there can be an infinite set or a set of uh, dependent things. Yeah. Accept it, no problem. Yeah. yeah, like this one, that one, me, you. We're all dependent, no problem. So we have a set now which is infinite independent things, but that set 
according to you, would then have to be independent, therefore? No. Oh, yeah, independent. Yes. yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the set itself has taken the form of an independent set. Yeah. So in other words, now the set has become necessary from contingent. Yeah. Correct? Okay. Now, what, what I would say to you in response is that anything that is made up of component parts uh -huh. is contingent. Now, now, the reason why we're saying that is, as we've explained before, yeah. if something is susceptible, anything susceptible to additional subtraction is limited. But I don't, I don't think it is. So like, How? In, in theory, we could conceive of that camera stand being there, or, or, or this person like this. We can conceive of that, but that doesn't mean that it, it, it could actually be the case, you know? Well, and okay, and okay. I, I, I'm not convinced, because it, it, in some ways it's impossible to prove. That, that this world, could, that, that this world it's, it's could have existed in the same way yeah. if, that, if, 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 if that, no, no, but what I'm saying is, even if it's composed of pieces, it doesn't mean to say that it could exist differently. So if, if that camera stand wasn't there, we can conceive that the world would generally be the same, but it is logically impossible to prove that we could have experienced the same thing. Because we're experiencing the world where this camera stand is there. So because, uh, because it no, but now you're, you're, now you're, now you're go I'm not sure if I'm reading you correctly, but, are you talking about the definition of necessity, which talks about everything being one way, not the other way? Yeah, so, so if you're saying that because it has parts, it's contingent, and I'm not, I'm not agreeing with that. Okay, so what, what I'm saying to you is that we have to now explain why I said that, all right? In the beginning of this conversation, I said something bereft of equality, for the most part, which you agreed with, cannot produce it, okay? Now, what I mean by something bereft of equality cannot produce it, is like nothingness yeah. is bereft of somethingness. Yeah. Therefore, if you add nothingness to nothingness, you yeah, just have yeah, more nothingness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm saying that there is no critical mass point at which you add nothingness to nothingness to such an extent that somehow you get something. Would you agree? Yeah, yeah, You, yeah. you keep adding zeros to zero, you have zero all With the time. With nothingness, yeah. No, right. No, but that's what you're doing, see. No, no, what I'm saying is that contingency works in the same way as nothingness does. So because the principle at play is the same. The principle is that something bereft of a quality cannot produce it with a few exceptions. And that's where the fallacy of composition comes. Yeah, but so, so I think because there are exceptions, I think this... Okay, well, no, I'll tell you, so the exceptions are this. And, and this might sound a bit complicated, but I'll, I will just lay it out for you, right? The exception are, if the adding of something to something else increases the whole in either size, intensity, or protraction, then the, the whole is differentiated from the part. So for example, if I say this, if I say this day is long, it doesn't mean just because the day is long, that the part, every single part of the day is long. Yeah, yeah. If, if I say that the elephant is big, yeah. it doesn't mean because the elephant is big, every single atom of the elephant is big, because yeah, yeah. it can be made of small parts. Yeah. What I'm saying to you is that the, the exception to the rule, which is that something is bereft of, something bereft of a, of a quality cannot produce it, is in which, is in cases which, if the part is added to another part, mm -hmm. the whole is increased in any way. Mm -hmm. Is if, the, if, if a part is added to another part, the whole is increased. Yeah. What I'm saying is that there is no evidence, no empirical or any other kind of evidence, just like there's no evidence that when you add nothing to nothing, you have yeah. something, yeah. there is no evidence, and the burden of proof is upon the one that's making the claim. So if, if I'm saying that there is no evidence that when you add contingency or dependency to dependency yeah. that you have independence slash necessity, yeah, yeah. then yeah. you would have to demonstrate to me yeah. how adding contingency to contingency at any point can bring about necessity. Yeah, yeah. so I mean, um, it kind of, it's really tricky to talk about infinity, right? That's what we understand. It's, yeah, really, yeah. it's not like a thing that we can really conceive of. Um, and same thing with infinite regress. But we were assuming infinite regress wouldn't be like an entity. It wouldn't, it wouldn't possess an infinite amount of real things, almost. It, it seems like perplexing to even think about it. Um, but I would say, even though adding infinity so, infinity add one is infinity, but it's also like a different type of infinity. In the same way as there are different types of infinities in scales, right? So no there's, problem. There's a, an infinite amount of numbers between zero and one, an infinite amount of numbers sure. between zero and zero point one. They're just yeah. different scales of infinity. Yeah. So, yeah, like Zeno's paradox and all yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah similar. Um, so, in the same way as we could have an infinite regress, and like I, I still think they, they can, their constituent parts are different to the whole, they're, they're treated differently. Yeah, but uh, by the way, what I'm saying does not negate the fact that you can have an infinite regress of things. Yeah, yeah but that won't make it independent. No, no, I'm, I just want to delineate what I'm saying with what you're saying. You're saying that you're making the argument, which is a fine argument, you can make it, 
which is that, which is again, for example, David uh, Hilbert, whatever, his hotel example, that if you had a hotel with an infinite amount of people and you have another person come in, yeah. then is, is there another person that comes in or not? Yeah. You know, so uh, you're making an argument for the possibility of an infinite amount of things in the world. Yeah. I'm saying, uh, notwithstanding that argument yeah. or whether or not that argument is true, yeah, what yeah, I'm yeah. saying is opposite, uh, is, is, is irrelevant to that well, in no, many ways. Is, so just yeah. Yeah. Is, is that you're saying that it only matters if, if adding something changes its size and I think adding one line of cause and effect does change its size. Not, not, not size. One... I said si a size, intensity or protraction. So, but, but like, so if something... Adds, oh, and or, and or. Yeah, yeah. So like in the same way as one H2O molecule doesn't constitute wetness or a tide, but if you add loads of them and adding to the size, you have an emergent property, so it's different, right? And this is, a, I think, one of those examples. Say that again, sorry, say that. Uh, so like, if you have one water molecule, it's not wet, yes. and, and it's not like, uh, you yeah. can have a tide. If you have loads of them, it is, yeah. because okay. as you said- No, but it's, it's, innate, it, but it's innately that molecule is wet. When you add it together, it makes a bigger- No, no, no. Yeah, yeah, but, 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 but like, yeah, the property yeah, emerges, yeah, right? Yeah. Yeah, when you add to it, in the same yeah. way as you said, the atoms of the elephant yeah, yeah. Like and, and the day, and, and they all apply. But I think this is one of those examples, because yes, you are adding one to infinity, which seems like it's staying the same size because it's infinite. It's a different scale of No, infinity. but I'm not, I'm, not I'm not negating the fact that you can have an infinity in the real world. No, 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 but I, you I'm, see that, you yeah, see but what I'm, I'm saying? Not, I'm not necessarily disagreeing with that point. What I'm saying yeah. is, is that um, when you say that there, there are exceptions to the rule, when you, when you talk yeah. about like, you can't add, keep adding, keep, can't keep no, no, adding, no. nothing, okay. nothing. Sorry, nothing. so I think we're, we're talking cross purposes. So let me just, I'm, I'm not making an argument for an, uh, for an impossibility of an infinity. Yeah, no, I know. Oh, yeah, okay, so I, I'm saying that even if you believe in infinity, yeah. th th what I said was that it depends on an infinite amount of what? Yes. So yeah, if, yeah. You, if you have non-entities and you yeah. add non-entities, yeah. To non-entities, add infinitum, yeah. yes, you'll still have non-entities. Yeah. If you add zero to zero, add infinitum. Yeah, 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 yeah. What I'm saying is that the, the, the principle at play is that something bereft of a quality cannot produce it. And I've given you the exception to that rule, which is yeah. that unless by adding a part to the yeah. whole, it increases its, uh, uh, but it increases its uh, uh, size. basically size, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. its intensity, intensity, or its, uh, what do you call it, protraction, yeah. its extension, basically. Yeah. Now, what I'm, so, so accept, I accept that you know you can put emergent properties together and it can bring something new, something emergent. And I think I think this this regress it applies to that rule. No, but what I'm saying is that what I'm saying here is there is no evidence yeah. that when you add contingent things to contingent things, uh, you get there's any necessary. critical mass point yeah. where it actually turns into necessity. Can I? Can I? Can I? So, so in order for you to say that there is evidence of that, yeah. you have to show us. Physical evidence, empirical evidence, or I mean, can, what, I, can what, I can I just quickly summarize what you're saying yeah. very simply? If I had one billion nothings, yeah. would I ever get something? No. Okay, how is it that you're saying if we have infinite contingent things, we will get something that is necessary? Because I, I think I don't think uh, I don't think because you, you you've said you said no to one, but you're saying yes to the same thing, which is the yeah, same yeah, example. Yeah, yeah. Because I think um, in the same way as, as you said that. Uh, the exception to this rule of adding something and getting something else. The difference is with like nothing and, and something is that by definition, but how could nothing you is the absence of something, right? Mm -hmm. I don't think by definition, like uh, necessity and and um, and contingency are the exact opposite. And, and I don't think they the are. existence of one would, would negate. No, they're not the exact opposite. Necess the opposite of necessity would be impossibility. Right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. All right, so in fact, impossibility is a kind of necessity because yeah. it's. it's, it's like a square circle necessarily does Doesn't not exist, yeah, 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 right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. contingency lies in, in the middle between the two categories. Yeah. So what I'm saying here is that there has to be evidence. Yeah. Like, as it, because it seems to me like, with all due respect, I think you both seem to be very polite. <laughs> what I'm saying is that you're skeptical. Yeah. You're very skeptical when it comes to evidence in the truth world, but you're open to something which the which you are unable to provide any evidence. Yeah. For. So, so the, the, the reason I justify it is that yeah. I'm not I'm not I, like the way I've de described it is if I do believe it. But yeah. my, my argument is is that this could be the case. Yeah, but you have to show how. No. Yeah, so, yeah. so the, the, this is the difference. I don't okay. right because, but, but you're an because I, I've got if I have two possible things that could be true, if one of them is not disproven, okay. I, don't, I don't have. So I don't let, let me tell you. Have to let me tell you. Okay, I accept. So, so now let's shift the but sorry, this keeps <laughs> this keeps coming back to me. Let's shift the burden of proof back on me. Yeah. These are my claims. Uh -huh. So in order to in order to negate or to affirm your position of a possibility of uh, adding con contingent things to contingent things ad infinitum yeah, yeah. or even on a limited level, yeah. and it somehow there's a critical mass point at which it becomes necessary, the following must be disproven. 
but I'm not looking to prove it. No, no, I'm saying the following, what I'm saying is, must yeah. be just prove it. So yeah, I'm yeah, saying yeah, is yeah, that yeah, yeah. the general it? principle at play is that something bereft of a quality cannot produce it. Yeah. And that the only exceptions to this quality is yeah. that if you add parts of whole in a mirrorological way, yeah. that somehow the set is changed or is, 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 is becomes bigger in somehow yeah. or more. Yeah. There's, there's some intensity difference or some... Yeah. So unless you have that, yeah. then uh, there will be a... It will be commensurate. The part and whole. There will be a commensurate relationship between part and whole. There will, it will not be differentiated uh, mereologically. Yeah. Right? So what I'm saying at this point is, if this is my claim, and I'm saying that anything you bring into an, like an, it, on an empirical level, as an investigation to this claim, yeah. anything you bring yeah. uh, will affirm this point. Uh -huh. Any example, any analogy, any inductive point, yeah. it will affirm this point. So in other words, if you put things together scientifically yeah. under a microscope, what I'm saying will still remain uh, yeah, integrous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So at, at which point now you have to say, actually, give me a counter, give me a counter example yeah. of a situation with, in, in which you can add part to whole and yeah. the whole will be different if the part whole relationship is not differentiated yeah. in the ways that I've, you have to give a counter example of that. Yeah, so, so the idea that uh, if you keep adding something, so like if you, it, um, your friend used uh, like add nothing or nothing to, to, to nothing and you won't get something. I think it's slightly different, I think we both slightly agree that these, the, the instances of necessity and contingency... No, I'm saying it's the same. I'm saying contingency and nothing is working the same way. Oh, okay. So, uh, yeah, yeah. But, but either way, the idea is that... Um, I, I understand the argument that if you say that a group of dependent things yeah. creates an independent thing, a, a necessary chain, which, which is, I, I also believe, uh, what is almost the number? Like, like if, if three dependent things aren't a necessary and add, what, what's the number? But the difference is when we're looking at like adding one and adding one, what's the critical mass point? We can't understand the critical mass point because infinity isn't just a really, really big number. Like it's a complete concept. So it's not that, oh, I've got a, I've got a hundred links, I add one. Well, that, that's not, that doesn't make an independent chain. I add uh, another one. It's not, that's not, it's not, you're not looking at a case of adding, really, because it is an infinite, it's not, it's not a number. Okay, so I'll say, look, I'll say no problem, but you have to you can see two points here. Like, you have to take two very clear logical leaps of faith. You have to believe infinity could exist. Not only that, but there's, a, there's some way in which if you add dependent things together, well, I'm going to go in. that it somehow becomes necessary, despite the fact that we know that the principle at play is that something bereft of a quality cannot produce it, except with the exceptions I've given. So you kind of had to endure the contradiction of, okay, I'm living a life. I know that there's no way of me proving yeah. that this is a possibility even. I'm, I'm not telling you to prove that this is the case. Yeah. I'm, t I'm just asking you to show me how this could be the case. Well, the, the reason it could be the case, so the, the idea is, is that the reason it could be the case is the probability isn't zero. The only way the probability could be zero of that thing existing um, or being possible is if we disprove it completely. And I don't think, so it's not, because I'm not really making a positive claim, the burden of provision on me. Yeah. And no, I'm, so, I'm making a positive claim. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But what, I, what I'm saying, so my belief system is, is, is that if, if this claim hasn't been disproven, the idea of infinite regress, and I don't think it has sufficient. No, no, infinite regress we don't have a problem yeah, with. Yeah, no, no, I know. Yeah. But I'm saying because this whole idea could exist, I don't have to prove it, I'm saying it could exist, and another one about a God necessary being could also exist. Um, I, I don't need to choose between the two. As long as these two things could be the case, I can be agnostic, right? So yeah. I don't need to prove, okay... No, but, all, but in order for you to live a... Me like, put this in psychological terms. Yeah. In order for you to live... Uh, uh, put in 80, uh, what's it, Richard Dawkins' uh, words, yeah? To be, for you to be an intellectually fulfilled uh, agnostic or whatever, yeah? Or an, he said into, Charles Darwin made him an intellectually fulfilled atheist. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. All right, I'm saying, for, for, if I were you, and I want to live as an intellectually fulfilled atheist yeah. or an agnostic, I have to be able to not show the existence, not of infinite regress, of a possibility of an infinite amount of contingent things coming yeah. together and producing necessity, not just, and I'm not saying to do it on an empirical level, at least on a conceptual level. And what you have not been able to do is this. So you have not been able to show how it's conceptually possible considering the general principles at play that we accept for the everyday life. Yeah and in logic in, in general, you have not been able to sh show conceptually how, despite the fact that something bereft of a quality cannot produce it, yeah. except with a, in, in certain circ mirological circumstances, yeah. that you want to make an exception for this rule with, when it comes to contingency, 
and you haven't shown conceptually how that exception can be made. Yeah. So now you have to live with that, endure yeah. that basically contradiction, if you like, or that yeah. difficulty. I, I wouldn't say it's necessarily contradictory. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm not making a pass, I'm not making an active claim about anything. So yeah. I'm saying that if I am, people ask me like, why I, I stay, why? Uh, <laughs> yeah. Go, go, go. Yeah. Like, like. Uh, it's very easy to have this discussion with an atheist, someone that like, believes that there is no God. I, they would have a burden of proof. But I, I don't, because I'm not, making passive, I'm not making that to claim. So all I'm saying is that unless all, all these other options are disproven, I have no logical reason to believe in one over another. Right? So this idea, it sounds absurd, of infinite regress and whatnot, I have proof that it exists. Or, now, what, what, it what, once again, infinite or, regress is I have an issue with right now. Yeah, yeah no, no, my, no, no, my issue is... Yeah, yeah. Even if I haven't been able to prove them, it doesn't matter because if you don't disprove them, there's still a possibility, and if it's still a possibility, yeah. like, well, you, if, if you're no, but, no, but if, true. If, if it's a given that something yeah. bereft of a quality yeah. cannot produce it, and it's also a given that the exception to that is that when you add part to whole, that there's some increase. Which I think. Any, no. It, so if you add these two things, if, if these two things are givens, yeah. that a something bereft of a quality yeah, yeah, cannot produce yeah, yeah. it, and b. That um, and, and B, which is uh, what do you call it? Except that if you add part to whole, that there's an increase in part, uh -huh. in, in whole. Sorry, if you take those two things as a given, which yeah. is that th there is no, there's no attempt to disprove these two points, yeah. then it follows that there cannot be an, a limited or an infinite amount of contingent things that at any point will produce a necessary, necessary thing, which, which means that it also follows that there's a necessary existence. Yeah. If that follows, if there's a necessary existence, then everything depends upon that, and nothing depends upon. And it depends upon nothing. This is our conception of yeah, God. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, no, Anyways, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you very much, brother. Yeah, take care. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah.